team in the IPL for starters. Feels good uh, uh, to be uh, claiming the title. Uh, as I just said, uh, we didn't start it off uh, the way we wanted to, but to be coming here and uh, uh, knowing that we are the champions uh, of the IPL feels really good. Uh, it's a special, special moment. It doesn't happen every day, so you have to cherish every moment you get. Well, of course, this award's about the special performance award. Now, Sonny Gavaskar and I played in a time that we were happy our team to score 200, right? <laughs> and you're scoring over 200, your good self. Like, just talk me through. You started off a bit slowly, didn't you, in the 264? Yeah, to be honest, uh, when, I, when I scored 264, and when I went back to the dressing room, uh, Duncan Fletcher, our coach, uh, reminded me of uh, starting really slow, and he said, you got off uh, 50 of just 73 balls. If you would have gotten 50 of just probably 40 balls, you would have ended up getting 300. I said, Duncan, <laughs> you got to take what's coming. So, you know, so, yeah, I mean, that that was the thing he told me. And then, I mean, cricket has changed nowadays. You see, uh, you know, 300, 350 plus is, you know, not safe. Uh, so, you can see in yesterday, I mean, uh, in the IPL as well, uh, we saw scores of 170, 180, uh, which was, you know, a winning score four years back. Uh, now, it's not a safe score. So, cricket has definitely changed, and it's good for the cricket. I asked one of the greatest players I ever saw. It's up there with Sonny, of course, um, and, and Sachin and Viv. I asked Greg Chappell once, how many times did you get in the zone, Greg? And the zone means just 20 minutes of 30 minutes of no. You just had this feeling of knowing where the bowl is going to bowl the ball, what line and length. Ha were you in the zone? You must have been, surely. And, and if so, how long were you in the zone for? Honestly, uh, before that game, I was injured. I was playing my first game after three months uh, when I scored 264. So oh. I was not thinking about anything. I just wanted to go on the field and enjoy the moment. I never thought I would score uh, 264. Uh, my aim was to do well. Neither did Sri Lanka. <laughs> Obviously, I mean, I <laughs> just went there with, with an open mind and uh, did what I could do the best. I'm going to go through some scores for you. There's some gentlemen of people who've scored a 200. And I'm going to see if you, you know your stuff. Who else has made a 200 in one day international cricket? Sachin Tendulkar. Correct. Narendra Sehwag. Two. Chris Gale. Yes. Martin Guptil. Yes. And you're missing one. Rohit Sharma. <laughs> you're missing one. It's happened seven times. We'll go through it again. Guptil, Gale, Sehwag. Satch and yourself twice, missing one person. Nonny ninety seven here in Mumbai. She also got two hundred. Hey. Huh? Our type of captaincy you had for the year, you struggled, then all of a sudden you realised at the end of the year or end of the season was fantastic. I'm certainly enjoying, uh, it's a challenge obviously uh, to lead any team, not just the IPL team. Uh, uh, I'm learning, uh, luckily, you know, Ricky Ponting, uh, who has who has had such an amazing experience uh, leading Australia. You know, with the help with the help of all the support staff, uh, we put a plan together uh, as to how we want to go about the tournament. Uh, uh, we didn't start it off well, but, you know, we wanted the team to stick together. It was important to you know, hold the team together and not let anyone drift away because you, you know what happens uh, when people start thinking about different things and things like that. So it was important to help the team together and then, uh, you know, go forward. We never were negative. We always wanted, we always had a positive approach uh, uh, throughout the tournament, which was good. And uh, you must have seen during the course of the tournament, uh, it was not just about one or two individuals. Uh, it was about 11 individuals who performed at any given point. Uh, everyone who went in wanted to make an impact on the game, so, which is always good. You know, as a captain, it makes your job really easier. And by gee, if you were making an impact on this game, congratulations last night. Brilliant knock at 264 and keep going what you're doing. We enjoy watching you play. Thank you so much. Well done. Well played.
uh, for the prestigious trophy and uh, God has been really kind. I'm really honored uh, to receive this award in front of my teammates and legends of the game. So uh, really feel uh, special. Certainly, she had a great IPL as well this year, 540. Just didn't quite get to the, the top end like Mumbai did, but you're going along beautifully. Yeah, I really enjoyed my batting uh, throughout, throughout the season, and I felt we, uh, as Rajasthan Royals, we played re uh, really well, and uh, four months which we spent in Australia, that gave me a confidence uh, to play, well in, uh, play well in IPL. 300 runs in England, 400 runs in Australia. Which particular country do you enjoy playing in the most? Both, I think. I mean, scoring Good runs. answer. Good answer. <laughs> scoring runs in England and Australia is really special. But uh, I want to mention one inning here, 103 at Lords, uh, because uh, we won that test match and winning is really important for me. So scoring 100 and winning winning that test match, uh, it's really special. Absolutely. That's a, that's a great honour in itself. Interesting, a lot of people don't, no, don't know about you, that you've played 14 test matches and 13 have been away from home. You only played one test at home. So what have we got to do to get past that? You've got to go to Bangladesh again. <laughs> so there's another three. So before you actually start to play South Africa? South Africa. Yeah, in, in August here. Well, you've got to go to Sri Lanka first before yes. that as well. So yeah, so far I really enjoyed, uh, enjoyed my journey and really learned a lot from my 14 test, match, uh, 14 test matches and I'm sure uh, this trophy will inspire and motivate me to work harder and uh, do well. You've opened the batting in the one days as well, are you enjoying that or do you prefer to bat a little bit down the order in the one day internationals, not necessarily T20s? As long as I'm contributing towards my team and I'm performing well, uh, that's, real, uh, that's a real key for me and a uh, number doesn't matter for me, uh, whichever number I buy, but my aim is to contribute towards my team and uh, keep, keep that consistency up. Well, you've been an absolute superstar and you're an absolute pride to your country. Well played. We enjoy watching you play. Well done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. So, <laughs> and he's been a coach earlier for India. So, you know, should we go back to having an Indian as a coach? Do you feel strongly about this? Do you think that it's just merit and quality of the person which matter, not the nationality, whether he's an Indian or not? I think the best person, it's not important. You know, you should have Indian or you have a foreigner coach. I think it's important if the foreigner can come and do a better job to the Indian boys, why not? But the only comfort I have, how the boys relate to, to the foreign coach. If I put myself 30 years back when I started, I would be very tight with a foreign coach. That's my opinion because I couldn't talk, and, uh, talk to the foreign coach at all. It took me 20 years to talk to him. <laughs> and that's why I, I feel the language is very, very important. It's comfort. I'm not saying uh, the foreign coach is not good enough, but I think uh, is all the boys can com communicate with the foreign coach. That's the only question mark I have. Otherwise, the best person should do the job. A couple, you can try sign language if you can't you know, kind of verbalize. But it's not a love game. <laughs> okay, but more seriously, we've had a couple of, you know, we've had John Wright who was very successful. Gary Kirsten was very successful, Duncan Fletcher was not quite successful. So, is there, I mean, Australia went through this thing with Mickey Arthur and then went back to Daniel Lehman. Is there a lot of merit in, you know, what he talked about is actually a cultural connect. That he was more comfortable with an Indian coach because the same language, culturally the same. Does that really make a big difference, Brett? 
Oh, look, I think with the language barrier, definitely. But um, I'm sort of under the opinion or the expression that it doesn't matter where you come from. If, if you're a good coach, you can coach young children coming through. Uh, I think it's also important that they get a different sort of style of cricket brought into the game. So if you're an Australian cricketer, you might want that West Indian flair. You might want that uh, Indian, that spin, you know, to play on those subcontinent wickets. So it can bring in different sort of ideas and plans. Um, Will they have a local coach? Will they have a Farangi? Who knows? We'll wait and see. <laughs> you know, you've seen a lot of, I mean, Indian cricket since your retirement, and you've had phases when you had John Wright, and you've had, you know, Greg Chappell. It didn't quite work out. John Wright worked out very well. Greg Chappell and Duncan Fletcher, not quite so. What's your reading of the situation? Where the Indian establishment is concerned? You know, if he's my uh, manager, I can say anything he'll believe. But if uh, there is an Indian coach, if a player says something, he knows because tomorrow the things will come back and say, look, you have a friend all around. So it's a very tricky situation. It's not easy. So I feel uh, Saurav Ganguly started that. He was looking for a comfort level, according to me. At that time, I think there was enough Indian player who could have done that job, but he wanted a comfort. So he got a lot of discomfort when Greg Chappell came in. Yeah, but most of the time, because he brings his own personality into that. So I personally feel uh, the Indian player, or if I were at that stage also, sometimes you feel you want to control the game or you want the manager to control. When the managers start controlling, it's wrong. I think manager have to manage the thing. The cricketer have to play the game. And uh, when the Greg Chappell happened, he want to play the game, which... <laughs> really uh, didn't really work out in that <laughs> manner. Look, uh, so Brett, you've been the most contemporary of these players. You, you played till very recently. So there's this talk of having a comfort level and more. the coach is more like a manager. But really, there's so much pressure on the information you can tell us. All you've got. I'll tell I'm you why. I'm far away. I'm far away far from away. inside. No, I'll tell you <laughs> why. Put it that Let's way. look at the trend, what's happening. Australia have gone back to, or gone to Darren Lehman a couple of years back. Uh, England, as I understand today, news today is that they are not going for Jason Gillespie, they are probably going for Trevor Bayless, West Indies have gone for Phil Simmons and so on, you know, South Africa have their own bunch of South African ex cricketers that help them out. Is there a kind of realization that is happening across the cricket world? We are better off with our own because there is so much pressure, cohabitation becomes easier and so on and so forth. I think cricket is much more open now what it used to be. I think everything is on, on very very much the media is there, everything is, you can see that. So I think the comfort level is come out with your own people. That's what it's realization happened. I'm not saying somebody come from Australia or England can't do the job, but uh, as if you see the comfort, that's very important. And the player need a comfort. He doesn't want uncomfortable because you can't perform. And I think India, if we are talking about, our players are very good, very talented, they are not mature. Uh, if I talk about Australian, they are much more mature player. They don't need guidance. But I think in our culture, you being 50 years old, still you look up to your father. So you, it's very, very important. But in Australia, England or South Africa, after 18, they will say, okay, go, look after yourself. Yeah. So it's a very important, the culture what we have, we feel very comfortable. If I had a, a coach of mine who's senior to me, I should go and feel comfortable to him and say, look, this is what's happening. And that comfort level to the player is more important. The performance, everybody knows they will give it. But if you don't have a comfort and if your manager doesn't give you comfort, then your performance starts affecting. Brett, do you think the coach in, 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 modern, in the modern game should be closer in age to the cricketers who are there? I mean, we've had Duncan Fletcher who was you know, pushing 70, perhaps a little too far removed from guys who are 25, 26 in matters of communication, even in the understanding perhaps of the modern game. That's one of the criticisms that one heard about. Do you think that the player should be, uh, the, the coach should be closer in age to the, to the players participating? Look, that's a, that's a tough question because how, how old's too old? That's the thing. I mean, how long's a piece of string? So I think you have to work work around the fact that if you do have a an older coach you know you need a lot of younger coaches around and that's the thing 
there might be one head coach, but there's, as, as Dean said, there's a bowling coach, a, a batting coach, a fielding coach, a yoga coach. There's so many coaches now that are in the team, but you do need one head coach. I think it is important, though, that they are in touch with, the, you know, the common game now. With, we've got three different formats of the game. We've got 2020, got the 50 over in the test cricket. So I think it is important that a, a coach this day and age has been through or has been around that era to actually watch it, to, to then pass on that knowledge. I'll let you know, have the last word. No. Over to you again. Talk us, you enjoyed the IPL, Rajasthan? Yeah, I'm enjoying a lot in the Rajasthan world. And you got 151 runs, a strike rate of 160. You smashed it, but you struggled a little bit at the end. Yeah, that's my role, that's why I'll do that type of things. Yeah. What, did you, what did you like playing with guys like Shane Watson and Steve Smith and these guys? What did you learn? How, how they digest their failures and how they digest their success. That's the most important thing. That I like from Shane Watson system. So, and uh, you got a wicket? Yeah. Yeah? Talk me through that. Yeah. David Miller. Yeah, caught on the on the boundary <laughs> set. That's a good get, David Miller. Huh? Yeah. So, uh, where do you like to bat? I uh, used you as a bit of a pinch hitter at times, but do you like to try and get in the top four? Maybe you have a bat, or do you enjoy doing the Kiron Pollard and the Dwayne Bravo thing and batting at five and six? This year, that was my role, that's why I batted that, that number. But for my domestic side, I'll bat it number four or number three. And uh, your, your dreams to be, become a, a great player like Sonny Gavaskar and Keppel Dev or something like that, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Were they, did you, how old are you now? What? How old are you now? Age? 20. 20. Would you, just trying to remember, did you see Sonny bat at all? No. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Just say yeah. Highlights. 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 Yeah, that was a black and white when we played. Fantastic. And uh, talk to us through who, who's been your great cricketers that you love the most watching? Is it Sachin Rahul, uh, Saurav Ganguly, Anil Kumble? Who's the guys you liked as a boy? Rahul sir, I like the most. Yeah. Rahul is pretty special, eh? Yeah. Smart too, because he's your coach and he selects you. <laughs> no. Very smart. Mm -hmm. Huh? <laughs> so all the best fantastic well done take that home with you and put your hands together for the, one of the great young finds for the year up all night polishing them, have you? Hey, look at those. Hey? Stay impressed, though. <laughs> Bad luck last night. You played really well. You played with good heart, but it just didn't didn't happen. Yeah, it wasn't meant to be. Um, obviously, I want to say congratulations to Mumbai Indians for being champions. Um, they deserve it. They play, they play very well. They were the better team. <coughs> and sometimes you just have to accept that they be, get beaten by a better team. It just happens sometimes. You get to the final, it gets to the right, but some, anything can happen in T20 cricket. Um, I've been fortunate enough to be one of your coaches in Bangladesh and looked after. I've always enjoyed your spirit and your singing. And your, and you love your music and mixing with the guys. It's, you've always been consistent about that. It's been great. Yeah, it's always good to enjoy life. And I think, um, you know, as an international player, I think it's my duty to ensure to in interact with the fans and and make sure that the fans, the fans are the people that you play the game for. So um, now in India, every time I walk the streets, um, people don't ask me anything about cricket. They just want me to dance. So 
you know, after I got a wicket, I tried to entertain the fans, but cricket is what I love and what I enjoy doing, and I always make sure that, um, you know, I do the right things, prepare well, so I can perform. And Greg, Simon, and it's a pleasure to be here. And but, but before you, you break into um, what, I, what I'm going to request, I have to tell the audience that I'm serious about him being a very good singer. His latest single, Chalo Chalo, was uh, released a few weeks ago, I think, in Chennai. So, wow, that, that's called a Photoshop. <laughs> well, all the very best, uh, Dwayne. Take it over, and uh, we'd love to hear you sing and perform. Okay, I just um, want to perform a single I released today, this, uh, this year, this IPL. It's called Chalo Chalo, and I make it especially for my Indian fans, and I'm lucky to have these beautiful dancers to join me. Um, DJ, do you have the track? <laughs>
Yeah, my brother played cricket, so I just come on his behalf and I saw the photograph. I thought, yeah, he looked young. Yeah, you, you still look great now. You're in great nick now. It's, what's your, the highlight for you as a captain and winning the World Cup for you as a, a cricketer? Winning, was that the biggest thing that you wanted? No, playing for the country. But you, they've always had a belief in winning. But you got them past. To beat the West Indies at their best in 1983 was just one part of Cassandra of your career with Sonny Vai, of course, and many other greats. It was an amazing time for Indian cricket. Yeah, when the dice is rolling towards you, you can achieve anything. I think self-belief is very, very important. Uh, I had experienced boys with me, and I have used young boys, my colleagues with me, so it was, wasn't very difficult. No, I can say it. I'm not afraid. But, but it was tough. It was difficult because we went there. We just want to play cricket. And uh, after through the tour, I think we realized we have the ability to win the cup. I think that was very important. And every cricketer, once you start believing that you can achieve it, then it's not very difficult. We've got so many fantastic cricketers here, like Dwayne, of course, Big Pack, and Azika Rahane, just am amongst many others. What's one piece of advice would offer a young kid starting his career now playing for India. Just one piece of advice would you give? I think believe in yourself and don't try to cheat yourself. But that's very important. Don't try to show up. You go to the ground and try to achieve what best you know. But sometimes I think uh, today when I see the cricketer, sometimes I feel shy. Why are they doing so much? I can understand. I can't dance like a bravo, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I think here, like to quote uh, what Bishan Singh Bedi will use, and he said that uh, somebody asked why they jump around when they take wickets. They said they don't believe they can take a wicket. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I think <laughs> I think if you achieve some extraordinary thing, you're allowed to. Your emotion should come out. But in every wicket you take and you jump like you never seen that. That's a, a, a package you never ever believe that. You're a bowler. Just go and do your job. And your job is to take a wicket. And I think that's very important. Sometimes uh, when I see reaction, I wish I can do that, but I couldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, well, I saw it 400 times, and I was about five of them. Um, just going to say on behalf of everyone that's, and everyone here and everyone watching the program, you've been a fantastic servant to the country. You've been a fantastic servant to the game. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And... Uh, not, not these people are standing here. I think uh, if the game has to go on, uh, people like you, uh, I like to acknowledge the half of the sportsman. It's very, very important. Because if you keep on recognizing the talent in front of people, not mine, sportsman, it's very, very important. And it's not possible. Uh, the game can go higher than that only if the sponsor come out and they start recognizing the game. We all play the game. I think the sponsor and the media is very, very important to take this game in a different level also. Thank you. And to you, Sunny, also. To you. Congratulations oh. to you, Governor. I, I have a Sunday game with Dino. We play golf. So and be India, careful. And India's winning all the time every time he plays me. He's good at golf too, <laughs> trust me. Well Dino, I just want to know, this is more than 100 trips in a train here. I know some swear words too, but there was one game I called you something he, and lost. He knows bad words more than <laughs> any Indian. Uh, Indian bad words. Because Sunny by him still and Vince Harkin taught me. But more importantly, it's all about you, sir. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Well and thank you very much uh, for coming. Dr. Sajib, I'd you. request you and Mr. Gavaskar to stay on stage for a photo op. Two legends. We need them.